everyone and welcome back to another video from Homemaker. In our today's video, we are going to talk about Syngoniums. Syngoniums are flowering plants in a racy family and these plants are native to tropical rainforests of southern Mexico, Central and Southern um, America and West Indies. These plants are commonly known as arrowhead plants, arrowhead wine, goose plant and many other names. But the botanical name of this plant is Syngonium podophyllum. Syngoniums are creeping herbaceous evergreen plants that can reach up to a height of 10 to 20 meters. And the leaves of this plant can change the shape according to the plant stage of growth and the adult leaves, they are much more lobed than the juvenile leaves. And I can show you some of them, like this one is a very big leaf and you can see the curves and dents in this leaf. Uh, there are many other leaves. Just just look at this one. It is uh, it, this one is also a mature leaf, and it is trying to give out more dents and curves to become more lobed. So, friends, as the leaf matures, uh, the leaf gives out more lobes, and it can reach up to five lobe leaf. Whereas the younger leaves, they are just um, like the normal leaves. They are not that lobed, as you can see. This one. This is a fresh new leaf. And it's not that lobed. So basically the beauty of this plant lies in the shape of the leaves, in the different types of colors that this plant comes in. You can see this plant in different shades of green, red, cream, yellow, lemon green. I have got one more variety of Syngonium with me and you can see the difference in the color of the leaves you can see that this one has got patches of um, green dark green on it whereas some of the leaves are very bright very faded and some leaves are darker this one is even more darker than the previous one if you can see so friends, these plants are very beautiful to keep in your house. They will not only brighten up the ambience of your house, um, but also these plants are considered as lucky plants according to Feng Shui. And that is because of the distinctive leaves that changes from arrow shaped to five lobed form as it matures. And the five lobes um, represent five elements, that is water, fire, earth, wood, and metal that provides a perfect balance of yin yang and that is why these plants are considered as lucky plants as per feng shui not only this syngoniums are considered as excellent air purifiers yes friends due to the ability to reduce um, the indoor air pollutants such as benzene formaldehyde toluene and xylene these plants also reduce airborne microbes and increase the humidity of your house which is so good you can keep these plants in your bedroom in your um, living room in your office room so you can keep them anywhere they're not only lucky plants but they are also beautiful vibrant um, air purifiers to have so there's so many um, benefits to keep this plant in your house and one more thing which is very very exciting about this plant is that they are extremely low light plants what else do you need you can keep this plant in every nook and corner of your house it can tolerate extremely low light conditions as well so now when we are talking about light let's move on to the care of this plant so friends these plants are very very easy to take care for Starting with the lighting conditions, Syngoniums are extremely low light uh, tolerant plants but they grow faster and maintain their vibrant colors when provided with medium to bright um, indirect light. But make sure that you do not expose your plant to direct sunlight because direct sunlight can burn the beautiful leaves of this plant. Okay, so next we talk about water so syngoniums are fairly thirsty plants and bigger plants um, need more frequent watering than the smaller plants especially in the warmer temperatures 
But friends, always remember to keep the soil moist but not soggy because these plants can develop root rot very easily if the soil is too uh, is is very soggy. So always um, go with the approach of um, soak and wait rather than um, little and often because if you soak your plant and then you wait for the soil to dry it will reduce the chances of developing root rot because the roots of the plant will be absorbing that water uh, from the soil whereas if you keep on adding the water little by little little by little the, the soil is always wet and um, the roots will not get enough of opportunity to dry and to breathe so friends um, always um, wait till the soil gets uh, dry and then again water your plant so the best approach is to stick your finger up to your first knuckle and see if the soil is moist if you feel the soil is um, wet do not water your plant only water when the soil is not sticking to your finger which means it's dry Next is humidity. So average indoor humidity of 40 to 50% is just adequate for these plants, but they would love it, um, to be in a humid uh, temperature, oh, sorry, humid climate. So even up, uh, humidity up to 60% is good for these plants. Always make sure that during summers when the air is too dry, you miss the leaves uh, of this plant so that um, it's not very dry for the leaves because when it gets too dry the leaves the edges of the leaves starts to become brown and crispy so um, next is the temperature so when we talk about temperature these plants will grow well in temperatures between 80 uh, sorry 60 to 80 degree Fahrenheit um, they do not like the temperatures below 50 degree Fahrenheit in winters. Keep them away from cold drafts and doorways um, cause they because um, they are rainforest plants and they like to be in uh, warm, humid conditions. So just keep them indoor when it's winter season in your area um, and um, just maintain the temperature of the room. Next comes the soil. So these plants love peaty soil because as I said that these plants belong to rainforests. So um, and uh, syngoniums are quite thirsty plants. So the peat moss will help to absorb uh, a lot of moisture uh, which these plants love to have in their roots. So um, I would say a soil combination with peat moss or coco coir or uh, coco peat uh, with compost and perlite would be the best mixture for these plants because the peat, peat soil will uh, absorb the moisture that is required for the roots and the compost will provide nutrition to the plant whereas perlite will help to remove the excess of water to avoid uh, root rot and to provide aeration to the roots. Coming on to fertilizing your plants, feed them with half strength complete liquid fertilizer once a month during the growing period which is the spring and the summer season uh, or you can um, top dress the soil with worm castings or compost in early spring and there is not much need to fertilize this plant in winter season but if you think that your plant is still growing even in the winter season just go ahead and fertilize your plant but not too much do not overwhelm the plant just a little bit uh, that's it and next comes the general maintenance which which is pruning so as I told you earlier that these plants have a creeping tendency and they um, they like to climb like pothos so if you do not prune your plants these plants can go out of control they become leggy they grow, grow everywhere and some people don't like uh, leggy plants don't like creepy plants they just like to um, the bushier look of the plant like this one so if you like the bushier look just keep pruning your plant from time to time to maintain that look and if you like your plant to be creepy you might need to provide a support to your plant because they will need they cannot support themselves they don't have tendrils or anything else um, to attach themselves with the wall or something so you can 
put a support next to them like I have provided this stick as a support for my plants I'll show you um, here I have tied my plant and they kind of um, like to creep like this so basically this stick is providing support to the plant but if you think that um, you would love to maintain just the bushier look of your plant um, so just prune it and the good thing is that the cuttings that you prune they can be used for propagation and making more syngoniums yes so how do you propagate is um, there you between two leaves there is a node just like both those there is a node between two leaves mm, I'll show you here so here friends you can see so between two leaves there is a node and the node gives out the root like this so when you have to take the cutting all you have to do is cut right in the middle of these two nodes so there is a root over here if you can see so there is a root over here and there's a root here so so what do you have to do? and there's one more root over here so what you have to do is you have to take a cutting between these two nodes and then you place the top cutting into the water and once this root develops it becomes a long developed um, well-established root then you place it into the soil and the soil will be the same as I mentioned earlier so it's very very easy to propagate them just like both those um, and maintain the look of this plant as well so now I would like to talk about some of the problems that you might see in this plant so first is the crispy brown leaves that you can see so as I mentioned uh, when I was talking about humidity that if um, when the humidity of your room um, gets low and the air is too dry the leaves tend to get crispy brown edges I'll show you one leaf that I have got here you can see so this gets crispy like that and uh, so you, what you have to do is maintain the humidity level of uh, your room or mist the leaves of the plants or you can use even a humidifier to humidify um, all the plants that need more humidity. Um, next is the lanky and floppy plants as I told you just now that they tend if you do not maintain them if you don't prune them they tend to become very leggy and they don't look very good when they are leggy honestly I don't like the look when they're too leggy and last but not the least is the pest so these plants are very very susceptible to any sort of indoor house pests like spider mites scales aphids um, white flies fungus gnats so if you think that your plant just keep an eye on your plant if you think that your plant is um, getting infested uh, you can use neem oil solution that's the best it's um, um, nature friendly as well uh, so you the combination like the composition how, how you have to use neem oil solution is written basically on the box so you make that com composition and you mist the leaves of your plant wherever you see the infestation and then uh, wash your plant thoroughly and make sure you can you get rid of all those nasty pests otherwise it will ruin the beauty of your plant so friends this was all about the care of syngonium um, and um, very easy to take care it just you need to keep um, an eye on the water and the humidity levels and that's it these plants are perfect for your home lucky for your home and look so beautiful and so elegant as soon as I look my plant I feel so refreshed um, and I feel so alive when I look at them just look at the beautiful bright leaves I feel like I'm still um, alive I have still energy after looking at the energy of these plants so friends I hope watching this video um, 
If you like my video, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more exciting videos and like and share with your friends. And I'll see you soon again with another exciting video. See you next time. Bye bye.